the Holy Roman Church, truth, secrets and connections to the corporation Catholics have always been prohibited from questioning the Pope and the precepts of the Church, for a very good reason, which will be explained as you read on. All popes and the privately owned corporate Holy Roman Church have always been major players in shaping world politics, governments, commerce, and minds since the early Roman Empire and continue to do so to this date. The Roman Church was originally a pagan church and remained so under Roman Emperor Constantine. The advent or appearance of Jesus Christ and his new Christian religious movement called Christianity and the religious wars that ensued caused Emperor Constantine to rethink his position as the pagan emperor of Rome. So, upon the orders of Constantine, at the Council of Nicaea, the pagan priests of the Roman Church were ordered to begin the difficult and tasteless task of attempting to blend Christianity and paganism together to create one church, to be called, the Holy Roman Church. Christ was an unusual man and prophet, with some typical human traits, and at the Council of Nicaea, the pagan priests, decided that Christ must be perceived as a living God and as a living God, any suggestion or possibility that Christ took a spouse must be removed from the scriptures, and thereafter priests were forbidden to marry. The Holy Roman Church actually remained more pagan than Christian and Emperor Constantine would eventually submit to what he considered to be the indignity of baptism, just months before his natural death. Historians for the Vatican made certain that Constantine would be depicted as a reformed man and Christian emperor, but that was not exactly accurate or true. Note, the pagan influence in the Holy Roman Church explains the outward discrepancies between the organization of the Church and the Holy Scriptures, such as ostentatious buildings and religious garb, idol worship, purgatory, exorcisms, excommunications, saints, demons, the hoarding of wealth and antiquities which always existed in the ancient pagan cult. Most people do not know that there are two popes. The white pope is responsible for the administration of the Holy Roman Church and the black pope is a Jesuit and mercenary and is responsible for eliminating people and problems affecting the church, with extreme prejudice. The Vatican today is a privately owned, corporate, money-driven, and self-interested religious cult. It is a front for the Italian P2 Masonic Lodge or Illuminati, which is routinely involved in murder for hire, gambling, pedophile sex, and white slavery. Vatican City is one of three privileged and autonomous city-states, which also coordinates elite Pan-American global organized crime for the Western banking cabal. The other two city-states are Washington, D.C., and the City of London. The Holy Roman Church has become identified as the center of the world's spiritual leadership, the City of London has become identified as the center of world finance, and Washington, D.C. has become identified as the center of world military power. All three are inseparable in philosophy and yet separate, corporate centers in their own right. Vatican City is immune from Italian law, London is immune from British law, Washington, D.C., is immune from state law, and all three are collectively the unified center of a secret society and criminal cabal called the Illuminati, and their headquarters is the United Nations building in New York City, the proposed capital city for their New World Order. Proof of both the United Nations and the city of New York can be located in the United States Code. During World War II, the hierarchy of the Vatican freely supported the Nazi program for world domination, and Pope Pius XII personally rendered his blessing upon Adolf Hitler. As mentioned before during this expose, King George eventually gained control over the new government of America, but he did not lay any new claim to the colonial land because of another treaty entered into by his predecessor, King James in 1213. The Treaty of 1213 was between King James and Pope Innocent III of the Holy Roman Church. Google the Treaty of 1213 and read it for yourself. Like most historic kings, James was not an intelligent man and was easily manipulated by Pope Innocent III. King James had been excommunicated by the Holy Roman Church because of having given his royal assent to an aristocratic document titled, the Magna Carta, which in part recognized the dukes and lords as sovereign and prevented the return of their estates to the king upon their death. King James had been forced into signing this document to avert a rebellion. 
James also realized that the Magna Carta would now deprive him of his income on those estates and their resale upon the death of the dukes and lords, so he invoked an ancient law he remembered, titled, The Law of Mortmain, The Dead Man's Hand, which established the basis of the current probate courts in America. Probate provides for a tax or percentage of the decedent's estate to be paid to the king, upon the distribution of a dead man's estate, and the failure to pay this tax, resulted in the ownership in the estate being sold by the court, to pay the tax and absent a valid, last will and testament. The estate is returned to the king. In America, the same laws apply and the estate is returned to the state. The Magna Carta and the Law of Mortmain upset Pope Innocent III because they placed the lords and dukes on equal footing with the sovereign king and his holiness, the Pope the Law of Mortmain prevented Catholic parishioners from willing the deeds to their homes and land to the church, by obligating the church to pay the king's probate tax. Pope Innocent III retaliated by excommunicating King James and he also issued a decree, declaring that, the Magna Carta, was an affront to God and the Holy Roman Church, and therefore was unlawful. King James was eventually convinced by Pope Innocent III that because of his excommunication, upon the king's death, his soul would be condemned to purgatory. Out of his fear of purgatory, King James made a serious act of contrition to regain the favor of the Holy Roman Church and the Pope, whom the king now regarded as God's only living representative on earth. The Treaty of 1213 spelled out King James's concessions, 1. Giving the land titles of Ireland, England, and France, to the Holy Roman Church, 2. The lands and oceans of the earth, 3. The payment of 1,000 gold marks each year, and 4. A royal decree, which declared the Pope, the Vicar of Christ, meaning the only living descendant of Peter, Christ's appointed representative on earth. Note, all royalty is a historic prevarication, but man has accepted their presence like a bad government. Devout Christians might argue this point, but realistically, somebody has to be in charge, whomever they are, to maintain order and organize protection from other nations. The Holy Roman Church and all future Pope would all pursue other avenues to gain similar treaties and control around the world, which is much easier to accomplish if you are the a Vicar of Christ. And this does however explain England's historic thirst to conquer other nation countries around the world. King James' royal decree that all the lands and seas of earth were the property of the Holy Roman Church eventually became the impetus behind the change in American land titles from two, which utilizes the ancient Roman trusts as a model. The ancient Roman trusts, remember the story about crazy Nero setting fire to Rome? Well, it happened but he wasn't crazy. He and the Roman Senate arranged that one and blamed it on the Christians as a distraction. The problem is that the fires were predominantly set in the Christian section. So what was behind this? After the fires had burned out, the Roman Senate created a land trust and into the trust, they entered all of the estates of Romans who owned property. Then, by royal decree, they declared that all of these property owners had died in the Great Fire and the Senate was appointed the trustees for these estates. As trustees, they could demand a percentage of the crops and excessive taxes. If the owner couldn't pay, he went to prison or surrendered his daughters as bond slaves. If the original owner died, the estate was sold, usually to a member of the Senate, and the gold was held in the trust. All that the original estate owner had to do to stop this insanity was to hire a scribe and decree that he did not die in the Great Fire and was in fact alive and quite capable of managing his own estate and serving it on the Senate. Few Romans were intelligent enough to know what to do and subsequently lost everything. All land deeds in colonial America used to be allodial deeds, which recognized our individual sovereignty and ownership, whereas fee simple deeds, only recognized the state and were open-ended deeds that were never closed or finalized. What does this mean, you ask? Elodial recognizes you as the king of your land. You make the rules on your land and nobody and no government can trespass upon your property. You the king are revered and respected and have an absolute right to use lethal force to protect your property. No government can tax your land, and the title is passed down from parent to child or husband to wife, etc. 
No bank will ever lend money against an allodial property because the bank has no way to foreclose against it but it will lend money against your chattel. Fee Simple recognizes you only as a tenant on the property. The state makes the rules on your land and anybody can trespass upon your property. You actually lease the property from the land trust, which belongs to the Holy Roman Church. The deed can only be passed down to family members upon your death, but not before your descendants open an estate in probate, which means that the state receives a percentage of everything the decedent once owned. If the descendants are short of cash, the property is auctioned off or a loan can be obtained from a bank. In a loan situation, the deed to the property is encumbered by the bank. This means that the bank is entitled to be satisfied first if the loan is defaulted on for non-payment. This process is better known as foreclosure. The banks have arranged for the Vatican, the judge, the clerk, the bank, and the lawyer to each receive a piece of the foreclosure. If you are unmarried and you fail to leave a last will and testament, the state can reclaim your property and leave your descendants with nothing. With this change in deeds, a land trust was created for these fee simple deeds, and the Holy Roman Church was designated the owner of the trust. The state and the courts become the trustees, and we Americans become a corporate tenants. Now here's where things get sticky, in every trust, there is an owner, a trustee and a beneficiary. The owner cannot be the trustee and neither of them can become the beneficiary, so we ignorant human beings have been appointed as the beneficiaries of the trust. Into the trust, they have entered other valuable property. Birth certificates of corporations, our birth certificates, and our social security accounts are converted into national securities and marketed as mutual fund investments. The trick, the trick is how to avoid giving these ignorant humans the benefits of the trust. And the solution arrived at by these lawyers politicians is to convert those ignorant humans into subcorporations. Corporations are companies and as such, have no inalienable rights. You've got to admit that these people are clever? Americans who believe they have just purchased a home and land have been lied to by the government, the bank, and their lawyer. They all lie as a precaution against inciting another American revolution. Everything is about commerce money. It rules the world and it rules your lives. In the small type of all fee simple deeds is the wording that specifies that the buyer is the tenant and not the owner. Your lawyer set up that little piece of fraud, never told you about it, and then charged you a fee for his services. And America keeps electing these lawyers to high political offices and you wonder why your life is so much harder today than it was for your parents? Hell, they were just getting started. That's not all, in the small print of the deed is a poorly worded contract between you and the state government wherein you consent to pay the property taxes on this deed and direct the state to send the tax notice in care of your name and address and by signing all of the deed transactions, you have agreed to another fraudulent debt. The tax debt guarantees that you can never own or reside on that property without paying. Whatever happened to that inest egg we were taught to believe in? Your lawyer set up that tax debt too and he receives a large percentage of your first tax bill for arranging that one. Caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. Beware of the politicians and lawyers. The ecclesiastical laws of England, Ireland, France and America now give the Pope absolute superiority over all governmental laws, decisions, and orders governing these countries. That would normally be a reasonable concession to God however the Vatican is a cult and is all about power, control and wealth masked by the veil of a national religious cult, supervised by the false, vicar of Christ. In all fairness, many of the individual parish priests are gentle, religious, and well-meaning people who are just as confused about everything as you are. It is the Jesuits and the priests who are promoted to bishop and cardinal who you need to be wary of. They are generally more politically aggressive and corrupt than they are religious. Didn't you ever wonder why priests are never prosecuted for pedophile sex or drunken driving? It is because the Vatican is at the center of the Illuminati P2 group and that is part of their business, the Vatican is in bed with them and the Pope can exonerate everybody and absolve them of their crimes and sins. 
Priestly perversions make it virtually impossible for a fallen priest to ever leave the church because once he does, he is no longer protected by the church. Every time a priest slips up, the Pope gains a permanent soldier who cannot refuse a Vatican accommodation. Note, the United States Congress adopted the Holy Bible as one of the organic laws of the United States. Organic means a foundational law. What Pope Innocent III missed during his editing of the Holy Bible is the fact that the Bible eliminates enforcement of all man-made laws in the first five books, which then becomes another prime example of how the laws of a corrupt government contradict each other, and as long as they are in power, they don't care. Remember the proverb, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Nothing could be more truthful. In all fairness, you all need to know that of the men who we have elected to a state or national political office, are actually much more corrupt than any of you ever imagined. They have sex slaves, perform mind control experiments upon them, take drugs, arrange murders, engage in pedophile sex, and prostitution and have been involved in white slavery and the sale of children and teenagers to foreign potentates. Anything for a buck and for their personal pleasure, with absolutely no accountability or conscience. They are the true sociopaths of this society and should be in prison, and I am not excluding any of the United States presidents, congressmen, or heads of state in this description. Except for those six, there wasn't a good one among them and that's the absolute truth. They are only half at fault because we stupid Americans put them there and never paid any attention to what they were doing and we accepted every lie they told us. Slave driving, the high contracting powers in Europe and America have decided that we common, illiterate, and unwashed slaves are better off not having this and other knowledge or information readily available to us because that would make us all as intelligent as they are, and that could make us difficult to control. Intelligent slaves have always been perceived as a threat to plantation owners, emperors, monarchs, dictators and other despots and we common folk are perceived by them in this same light. As hard and tasteless as this comment is to digest, the middle and poor classes are viewed by all governments and by the royal and elite of the world as ignorant slaves that require management, by and through slave driving program techniques. Too many slaves are much too difficult to control and so programs to reduce populations in addition to wars have constantly been engineered and employed without our consent or knowledge. Hence, the recent growing number of cancer and AIDS patients and other diseases, which have been created by government laboratories under military defense contracts, were then introduced into our society by air, water, and contaminated blood. During World War II, Nazi scientists experimented with a toxic substance called fluoride and discovered that watered-down doses of fluoride ingested over a long period of time make the human mind more malleable or easier to influence. Other tests involving an acid compound called chlorine, ingested in small doses over an extended period of time, severely injure the human immune system. Today all public water in America is treated with chlorine and fluoride chemicals and we have all been told for the last 70 years that this is good for us. All humans should actually be ingesting small doses of alkaloids applied or added to their boiled drinking water to maintain their natural immunity from childbirth. All human children are born with an alkaloid system however due to the health benefits derived from alkaloids, the US government has prohibited the sale of all water purification devices that alkalize drinking water. The abuse of alkaloids however like all abuses is just as detrimental to human health as acids and poison, so care should be employed. China or Japan manufactures an alkaloid purification system, which can be purchased by mail order only. Another popular slave-driving technique involves racial disunity. Kings and governments intentionally stir up problems between the various countries and races, which causes fights and murders between these groups and once they get out of control, officials step in and kill or imprison everyone they can. At present the big move is to create racial disunity between the American masses and immigrants from the Middle Eastern countries or with the Latin and South America ethnicities. If you are one of those American people who hate the Mexican and or the Muslim immigrants in America, then you are probably not too awfully bright because you are being handled and manipulated by Uncle Sam with extreme prejudice. 
The same thing was done to Japanese American families during World War II, and they were totally innocent of any wrongdoing. Other Slave Driving Programs Most people actively participate and cooperate in these slave driving programs. I'm certain you won't like reading this, but the most identifiable programs involve our professional sports competitions such as football, baseball, wrestling, etc. Team sports are much easier to manipulate because they involve so much activity whereas, wrestling is the only sport that appears phony all of the time, even when participants are paid extra, to physically assault each other. Just so you understand, all of these professional athletes truly are the consummate athletes in their own right, and it really would be quite a spectacle to watch them legitimately attempt to win a competition, but, it could also result in their last and cost them a profitable career, so games. Matches and coaches need to be manipulated. The offer of large salaries helps smooth over the athlete's conscience and in time they lose their conscience, just like actors and politicians. Sorry to break your bubble, but that's life and they and we are being manipulated. All of the players occasionally suffer real injuries from accidents, but it still amounts to nothing more than the glitz and glimmer of Hollywood, just on a different plane or level. The purpose of these professional sports is to entertain the masses and to inflate and expand commerce. It's all about the money. Unfortunately, the public is bamboozled into paying horrendous prices to view these sports competitions, they are huddled into stadiums with uncomfortable seating and sometimes exposed to the elements. They are usually offered expensive refreshments to purchase and members of the public are encouraged or enticed to wager bets on the outcome of each competition. The team owners receive a percentage of those bets in exchange for a prearranged list of wins and losses, a percentage of the ticket sales, concessions, television advertisements, and merchandising. The owners even attempt to perform like they are elated or concerned, but it's all an act. It's all about the money. Former athletes are hired by the media to discuss the players, and teams, forecast the outcome and narrate the competitions. These star narrators help add more drama to the game and they help cover up bad acting and botch plays by legitimizing or chastising the actions of plays, referees, coaches, and players who react, get kicked out, strike out, miss a shot, push an opponent, miss a block or drop a pass. It's all good because drama sells tickets, increases betting, and sells merchandise and we pay the price. The success of these professional programs also encourages high schools and colleges to entertain similar athletic programs because of the extra collateral that can be earned for the schools and they unwittingly help to legitimize professional sports. High schools and college teams play legitimate sports so naturally those spectators are more likely to expect and believe the same amount of legitimacy will continue in professional sports too. All of these sports promote combat and competition and separate and eliminate the weak from the strong. Strong slaves are more productive, it's a fact. These sports competitions help drive the public mind to pay little attention to what government and businesses are doing to them, and they help promote sales, patriotism, and loyalty before each competition. All of this creates and sustains a multi-billion dollar commercial enterprise and government from which the royal and elite classes all profit. Credit scores, I believe you first need to understand the purpose behind credit scores. The credit scoring system is another slave driving program that was devised by the Federal Reserve System and with the blessing of the high contracting powers. Its purpose is to squeeze more cash out of borrowers and to force the public into becoming loyal conditioned slaves. First of all, when you apply for a mortgage, you are requesting a loan of their valueless currency to purchase a home or automobile, which you can never own and upon which you pay a penalty, called interest and costs. Those who are approved for a loan are watched closely to see if they have swallowed the fraud, hook, line, and sinker and follow the repayment instructions fully. Those who can't follow their directions, lose a job or financially extend themselves are rated badly and are penalized severely then and whenever they apply again, called. The personal information you provide to them when applying is also sold to other financial institutions and collection agencies. They tell you a no, but unless you take the time to read all the fine print, they bluffed you again. 
some merchandising companies have or perform a type of collection process first as a courtesy and when you fail to bring your payments up to date, they discharge the debt and sell the discharged debt to collection agencies for pennies on the dollar. These collection agencies are all owned by law firms who hire people to contact you and attempt to collect the original debt plus penalties for them. They do not represent the merchandising company, they represent their own business and probably pay $25 for a $300 discharged debt. If they can persuade you to begin making payments to them, that creates a contract between you and the collection agency regarding a debt that no longer exists. When a debt is discharged, it means that your agreement with that company is cancelled for good. Those lawyers really are pretty clever. If you are a compliant slave, your credit rating will be high and yet there really isn't a difference between the borrower who has perfect credit and the borrower who has poor credit, as I will discuss next under home mortgages. It is all a corporate fraud to increase their wealth and deplete yours. Home Mortgages Whenever you apply for a loan, you are requested to sign a promissory note for the total amount of the loan. Then a payment account is established. The promissory note is never endorsed by a member of the financial institution so it can be sold without your permission. Three days later, the original promissory note, signed in ink, is sold to another institution or foreign government, who will collateralize it or use it like a bond and issue currency or loans against it. Why the three days? It is because you have the right to withdraw from or cancel any contract within three days of acceptance. It is about the only right we have left and it may be found under the Truth in Lending Act. All that matters to the bank is that you are a flesh and blood human being and that you have affixed your signature to a promissory note. They don't care if you have a great credit score or a poor one. Flesh and blood human beings technically own everything, and all corporations are fictional companies that have no value and cannot function until some human being blows life into them. The promissory notes each sell for the same value. Since the promissory note was sold without your permission, your mortgage debt to them is actually but they never tell you about that. In fact, the bank also sells your repayment plan to an investor or another bank for much less and agrees to manage the payments for them. Most banks now employ a middle company to collect your mortgage payment. They do this because your mortgage and repayment plan is not reflected on the bank's bookkeeping and under federal and international law, it is supposed to. So the middle companies act as a buffer and keep them out of trouble. Since the banks can't legally make loans against their depositors' assets, everything is just a paper chase. Your payments are deposited into the investor's account who purchased it and if it involves another bank, your payment is transferred to that bank where it is deposited into a savings account, under a number instead of your name. The reason the account is numbered is because it is really your savings account. You don't owe them a debt and so they conceal your payments as a numbered savings account. If they included your name, they would have to mail you a monthly accounting and that would tip you off. So any foreclosure that might occur thereafter is totally bogus and unlawful because they cannot produce the original promissory note. If demanded, they will produce a black and white photocopy but that is actually the counterfeiting of a negotiable instrument unless it is reduced or enlarged. The point was that if they could not produce the original note, it was sold. Given these circumstances, it was absolutely necessary for them to involve the judges in their criminal conduct. Foreclosure judges receive 10% of the original promissory note after they authorize the bank to steal and sell your assets in foreclosure. This process essentially makes the rich man richer and explains how the banks can own the bulk of the skyscraper buildings, parcels of land, and stadiums across America. In reality, we pay for our homes three times over their original purchase price without ever securing ownership. Mr. Warburg was a pretty ingenious fellow when he designed the Federal Reserve System and why we Americans always need to be two steps ahead of the banks, courts, and lawyers. According to the Constitution, the only way you can pay a debt is with silver or gold and since there is no silver or gold-backed currency, the only thing we can do is to discharge our debts. A discharge is never a payment in full and it can be resold or borrowed against. Hence, lawyers purchase discharge debts for pennies on the dollar, 
open a collection company, and hire people to harass you into paying that debt to them. Remember that in all legitimate contracts, you always receive something of equal value from the company or person you borrowed from. Collection companies fail to provide you with anything of equal value and lie to you that they are collecting the debt on behalf of the original creditor. The best way to handle a debt collector is to deny who you are and every question they ask. Interesting note, in Libya, a citizen can apply for a home mortgage or business loan from the government, interest-free, and he owns the land. In most cases, a citizen who desires to start a business like farming, the borrower is given a $50,000 grant or the land, a tractor, the seed and livestock to get started all for free. And our government has the audacity to call Muammar Gaddafi a fascist? President Gaddafi had control over $200 billion in gold and his life was threatened by the criminal cabal if he refused to surrender that gold. Gaddafi refused and was subsequently murdered by paid assassins hired by the United States government. May he rest in peace. Corporations As I mentioned earlier, a corporation is a fictional character or entity in law created by the government which makes that fictional character or entity the intellectual property of the government, but you are never told that. Corporations can own any number of other corporations but can never own a flesh and blood human being. All laws created under this parent corporation will essentially become corporate laws and regulations to govern the parent corporation and all subordinate or subcorporations owned by the parent. These corporate laws and regulations are called statutes and their effect and control over human beings are deceptively obtained by consent through civil contracts. Look up the word, person, in any modern law dictionary and you will see that a person is regarded as a corporation and not a flesh and blood human being. These civil contracts were secured by and through several federal and state voluntary registration programs designed to convert and enslave flesh and blood American citizens of the republic into corporate property. These registration programs always involved government benefits as an inducement however nothing is for free and when the state and federal governments offer anything for free, you can bet that upon your acceptance, there are ropes and chains about to be attached to your neck, hands, and ankles. Most people do not know the weight of the chain they already bear. Legally, these civil contracts lacked a mutuality, meaning that all registrants must understand the true nature and intent of the contract subsequently must knowingly accept or consent to the terms of those contracts. The government's subversive tactics pervert immutuality and lawfully eliminate any and all contractual relationships, as historically established by the International Law of Contracts aka Uniform Commercial Code. The federal government, the BAR and the courts, rely upon the maxim that, ignorance of the law is no excuse, which is capable of being thrown back in their deceptive faces through literacy, which is what this expose is attempting to provide to you. When a person is arrested or sued for a statutory regulation, also known as a, criminal or civil law, he is actually being accused of violating a, corporate regulation or corporate breach of contract. A civil contract that only exists over human beings by deception and fraud. There are no criminal laws in America. Rule 1 of the Federal Rules of Procedure is used to specify this very fact. All laws are civil, which was later modified by the Judiciary Act to conceal this fact by creating one set of civil rules and one set of criminal rules, but this never changed the fact that there are no criminal laws in America. The Judiciary Act was necessary, once common people began to represent themselves in court and uncovered this and other frauds. These rules of procedure and rules of court were originally designed and adopted to reduce confusion in the courts and were intended only for lawyers however this is not to say that the courts will not try to enforce them against non-lawyers. And by the way, there is no legislation that prohibits a common man from practicing law without a license. Neither Lincoln nor Clarence Darrow ever attended law school, either was licensed and each became a famous lawyer. This prohibition will be discussed next. Today, each judge representing a court of record is a lawyer and a member of the American B. AR Association Union, and all these union judges have conspired to write a local rule of procedure, prohibiting non-lawyers from the practice of law without a license. 
This practice protected their treason, ensured work for the union membership and is openly in violation of federal antitrust laws. Antitrust laws were intended to prevent large monopolies from forming because such monopolies can control prices, eliminate competition and violate free enterprise, which is exactly what the BAR and this local rule of court intended to accomplish. Those antitrust laws have been modified so many times by BAR congressmen that they now almost assist in the creation of large monopolies. Gee, how could that happen? A lawyer is issued a license to practice law, a license permitting him to do something unlawful, so how did he pay for his license when our government has abolished our right to possess or own silver and gold? The lawyer paid with Federal Reserve notes having no ascertainable value. So now, how is it that any lawyer is licensed to do anything? They aren't, so when a lawyer or a lawyer judge enters a court, they both come into that court with unclean hands to prosecute, defend or judge. Unclean hands means that their appearance is reproachable and it makes them incapable of seeking or rendering a judgment or a conviction against anyone else. An old maxim of law says it all, fraud vitiates everything. The federal and state governments are not real. They are privately owned corporations called governments. The judges are privately employed administrators called judges and the law is nothing more than their corporate regulations called statutes. The courthouses are no longer public buildings but are privately owned structures called judicial centers or a department of justice and the prisons are privately owned facilities that do not mention the city or county anywhere in its name. The public defenders, prosecutors, and police are not there to protect and serve the public, but to the contrary, they are there to protect and serve the private corporation. The Vatican, judges, prosecutors, and clerks make money off of your conviction, and the private owners of the prison make money off of your incarceration. Everything you sign with a wet ink signature becomes a negotiable instrument in their world and is converted into a guaranteed asset like a because you are a real flesh and blood living person. Many judges and law firms own the government buildings and the prisons. Your presence in a prison also fuels a mutual fund investment. In their world, everything is fictional, and therefore your living status creates substance for their world both physically and in writing. Who pays for the bulk of these convictions? Remember those land trusts in the name of the Vatican? The prosecutor levels a charge against you and the trust, with the clerk. The clerk documents the case and appoints a judge as the administrator for the trust. You are brought before them and asked if you are the named person on the indictment and they promptly advise you of your rights and the charge. It is your birth certificate that is actually on trial and being prosecuted, but you don't know that and your court-appointed lawyer or privately hired lawyer never tell you. Upon your conviction you will be convicted, the land trust will pay damages to all involved except you because you are not real. The living you is the beneficiary of the trust and the corporate you is on trial. They consider that those trusts are for them if they can access it. You never receive the benefits of the trust and you are sentenced to prison, probation, and or a fine. Rebellious or free-thinking individuals are usually ostracized, censored, punished or stonewalled at every turn because they refuse to accept the propaganda and slave-driving techniques being forced upon them by their private corporate owners called the high contracting powers. We are all forced to submit to a forced education wherein the subject content has been fictionalized and is supervised by the E Department of Education. We are periodically tested and graded to ensure that we have been sufficiently indoctrinated with these facts before being graduated. The carrot or rewards used to entice us into memorizing these false facts are words like cum laid, diplomas, intelligence quotients, college entrance exams, stats, and rewards like educational scholarships, grants, and the promise of a better job in life. And few ever receive the carrot. You are never taught the truth unless you are royalty, the elite or you are a specially gifted individual. Naturally high intelligence is an asset to the elite and the royal factions, and besides, you probably will figure everything out for yourself, and so they encourage such children to join them. Those who refuse are eventually eliminated with prejudice. Pharmaceutical companies, this is another one of the largest scams in America. 
The Congress and the Department of Defense poisons us and the pharmaceutical companies provide drugs that treat the symptoms. They own all of the medical schools and make sure that new doctors never learn how to treat disease only the symptoms. When it was discovered that the juice of the marijuana plant stimulated the human immune system, which in turn naturally eliminated every disease affecting the human body, Congress made marijuana a Schedule I drug and the propagation, use, or sale of it a felony crime. Use a juicer to extract the juice. It will not make you hallucinate unless you heat or smoke it because heat changes the chemical composition. These companies make billions off of the medical profession and they kick back a large portion of the profits to every congressman and president. Everything is about commerce. To learn more about this information contact us at glgse7en at gmail free yourself today. We're excited to provide you with access to the most up-to-date technology and research that have successfully helped numerous individuals in the past. We're confident that they can do the same for you. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions or concerns. We highly recommend reviewing our information packet, which contains cutting-edge and proven knowledge. We believe that access to this information is important for everyone, and we encourage you to share it with your friends and family.